SCP-567 is located in the dungeon beneath Site-41, located in It consists of a series of eight cells designated SCP-567-1 through SCP-567-8. With the majority of people or objects, the cells remain inert. However, when individuals meeting certain conditions come within 2.5 meters of a cell door, shackles will materialize and launch from the inside of the cell, restraining the subject and dragging them within. Once the cell door closes and locks, both the subject and shackles vanish, leaving behind no trace of any kind. Each cell appears to have its unique trigger conditions in order to activate, which seems to involve committing some sort of criminal or hierarchical act. Cell Trigger Conditions SCP-567-1 Individual has committed theft. SCP-567-2 Individual has committed rape. SCP-567-3 Individual has committed murder involving SCP-567-4 Individual has committed murder involving SCP-567-5 See Addendum 567-01 SCP-567-6 SCP-567-7 SCP-567-8 Unknown SCP-567-8 is a unique in that, unlike the other cells which all stand empty, it contains a single wooden chair. The chair is nailed to the floor in the center of the room and appears to be many years old, though it does not rot. SCP-567-8 is only activated once when a flaw in security allowed to enter Site-41. As soon as passed in front of SCP-567-8, it activated, causing there were a total of 23 casualties, including Task Force Delta-9 in its entirety. By order of O5, all further testing on SCP-567-8 is suspended and its entrance is to be sealed from the rest of the cells. On rare occasions, the cell doors of SCP-567 will open and release an entity. Given the designation SCP-567-9-X, the X being replaced with the integer. SCP-567-9 usually takes the form of a previously undiscovered creature and is always aggressive. Once out of its cell, SCP-567-9 attempts to break out of SCP-567. If successful, SCP-567-9 will There seems to be no common trait of the creatures being given designation SCP-567-9, except that they tend to be very aggressive and relatively intelligent. As well, every instance of SCP-567-9 has had burn marks around its appendages. See Incident Report Log 567-4012 for de details. On only two occasions have individuals placed inside a cell by the Foundation reappeared. In the first instance, D-903-912 escaped from SCP-567-3 68 hours after being placed within it. Subject was suffering from severe injuries, including several lacerations, and internal bleeding, and burn marks around his wrists and ankles. D-903-912 died several minutes after reappearing before Task Force Delta-9 could reach him. In the second instance, D-937-122 appeared 157 months after being placed within SCP-567-6. D-937-122 2 attacked Foundation personnel on site despite also having suffered some serious injuries including head trauma, several missing fingers, and burn marks around her wrists and ankles. Once restrained, D-937-122 was interrogated by a member of Task Force Delta-9, see Audio Log 567-937-122. Addendum 567-01 Further testing with SCP-567-5 has revealed that it is triggered by those who have committed adultery. It is also noted that not all individuals who have committed theft trigger SCP-567-1. Consistent patterns have not yet been established. <laughs>